this now. Six. Five. five. Number five, and I know this because until approximately three months ago, it was named hashtag five. Oh, oh <laughs> really? They're just numbers until they... <laughs> well, I would like to have the title first, but it's the hardest three words for me to write. The, hu the other 170,000, no There are always three no words worries. as well. Always three words. <laughs> this is the magic ones. Yeah, but they're elusive. So did this one take you longer or shorter to write than the others? Longer, but so, it was interrupted by um, a baby, so yeah, that's why. But those children, they, I just get <laughs> this is urgent <laughs> literature coming. Like why? exactly, and but I have to say I, I'm a notebook keeper, and mm. I have my notebooks that I kept while I was um, writing the book, and I actually have notes from the 13th of October 2013, which is when Henry was born. So I was wow. diligently working even that <laughs> night. <laughs> is, is it strange for people to read it in retrospect as well? Because they're just a discovering the characters now and you're like oh yeah no I've spent loads of time with them I know them absolutely it's one of the things and it's actually a strange thing about writing a book it's like going into a bubble mm. you open the bubble and you're in the world so vividly the whole time you write it and then the moment you finish for me it's like the bubble shuts and other people can come in and I can't get back in there now that, <laughs> it's over yeah, for me because I was going to ask you about Lost Children and Peter Pan and it's that Peter Pan returning to the window and not being able to get it's through it's exactly like that it's, but I it's like that for you it, in your I own novels I can't feel it the same way as when I was writing it but it's a good thing because that bubble drifts away and it's time for me now to open the next one. Uh, you talk about how the like the location is kind of a character yes. you know they, they kind of get to know and a lot of the stuff that happens with the characters are all drawn back to this one house yeah. and it feels like that is almost he like he or she yeah it, oh, it's like is the house a male or a female <laughs> oh good question um, I think the house is a female okay She's kind of looking after everybody, but also... I do, I do, yes. Holds a lot of secrets. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Yeah, yeah I think if, if I had to give a gender mm. to the house, a female. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I love houses. You know, yeah. I've got a lot of writerly obsessions, but mm. one of them, and, you know, I, even if I didn't know it consciously, now I can look back at my books and go, oh, it's about the houses. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we knew. They were running everything all along. <laughs> exactly. And winking from their windows. Exactly. What made you pick Cornwall? Um... I have sort of fell in love with Cornwall from afar um, when I was writing The Forgotten Garden because mm. I was looking, sort of auditioning for places um, that had a smuggling past and the, the, the yeah. sea. And I looked at lots of different locations and then I stumbled upon the story of the Lost Gardens of Heligan. And, you know, this is right up my alley. It's a real life Sleeping Beauty house, yeah. you know, <laughs> after the First World War and, you know, everybody left and the house and the garden grew over and then was rediscovered yeah. and, and brought back to its, you know, beautiful mm. um, best. And once I'd read that, it's like, oh, I have to set the book there. So when I was um, writing The Lake House, um, I wanted to write about an abandoned house yeah. and, and a place that over 70 years could completely be, in, you know, sort of um, overtaken by the wilderness. Yeah. You know, so this civilized place that had been um, overgrown mm. and it had to be Cornwall. Yeah. It's the secret corner of England. It is. If you're going to hide something, you'd hide it in Cornwall. Oh, yes. And there's so much magic and you know, it's, it's almost in the air it sounds so cheesy to say yeah. that but it does feel that way yeah smugglers by nature exactly <laughs> it, it sounds very unromantic to talk about because especially mm. in books that are quite romantic but I love structure. I loved maths at school. I, I really did. <laughs> it's those building blocks. It is. It's, yeah. And it's it's the architecture that you need before you hang the pretty house around it. You mm. know, if you don't have a good architecture, the house falls down. And I think that's, so for me, that's one of the joys of writing is mm. coming up with the structure and working out where different elements mm. of the story go and how to how to tell it. I think it's really interesting when we talk about male and female writers because yeah. we think of male and female kind of thought processes mm. but actually the way you describe especially with a crime novel it takes this spatial awareness that we often like can associate with masculinity yeah. and that organizational and that like really like Definitely. really rigid structure Definitely. but then a flowing like narrative yep. comes over. Well, I always think, see, I'm a left-hander, but I was ambidextrous mm. as a small person, so mm. I always think, well, maybe that's left and right brain. Mm. So I love words, but I really like yeah. spatial math stuff as well. Yeah, and I think that's how you trick people, because it's a very mm -hmm. flowing, like, relaxed narrative. Just, this is just what happened, chill out. It's like, <laughs> and then you get to her and you're like, oh, she's been crafting this the whole time. <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> I, it kind of reminds me, like, I've seen a lot of uh, stuff where people put loads of post-it notes around, and it reminds me of, like, you know, CSI, when they're like, right, so the criminal's here, and we had a map here and did you do you map stuff like that as well you're like 
Yeah, I do. It and is kind of like a crime scene. <laughs> it is. It's like a constant um, game between you know me and this imagined single reader. One mm. will do. I, I you know, don't yeah. need millions, just one reader. And um, I'm constantly playing cat and mouse with them when I'm writing. Maybe yeah. not post-it notes, but for me, notebooks and scribbles and arrows. And I'm very visual, so I need to sort of almost see it like in a skeletal framework um, sort of way. But yeah, and kind of see how it's structured. Yeah, it's. I need to write things down to 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 remember them and to commit them and to see them, you know, yeah. like to sort of move them um, yeah. around the page. And what I really loved about this book, which I think is just really amazing, is the whole, the meta side of it. You know, it's a story within a story and everybody in the story is telling stories, even if they don't realise and they're all, you know, Alice aspires to be a writer, becomes a writer. She's, she grew up with this, this older guy who was also a writer and yeah. wrote about her mother as a yeah. character. And it's very, you know, did you get a lot of inspiration from Alice in Wonderland and those kind of books that... Definitely, and calling two of the characters Alice and Peter uh, yeah. was definitely a sort of a, a way of playing. And, and again, with readers, because I know my readers will get that. And yeah, they'll, they'll they're like in the jokes fact that they're, almost. They're in yeah. jokes, yeah, and these, these lost children in this book about lost children. And in fact, all the characters in the book are, have been lost children in some way. You know, even Peter, who um, mm. grows up in this fa this loving family, but he's he's the cuckoo. He he doesn't feel like or look like the rest of them. Yeah. Um, so that yeah, the book is filled with characters who didn't quite fit and are escaping. Yeah, <laughs> and they somehow um, all form part of each other's um, life and journey. You know, towards yeah. the end of the book. Mm.